Welcome back. You're watching the news. Uh, the cost of the war in Afghanistan, at least to the United States so far, has been a little more than $500 billion. But very little of that money has benefited Afghanistan itself. And the nation remains one of the top 10 poorest countries on the planet. And as the U.S. and NATO begin to withdraw, it could get even poorer. According to the United Nations, the move could bring a huge fall in employment. And as our correspondent Tony Chung reports, the most vulnerable are children. By the end of 2014, U.S. and NATO forces should have left Afghanistan. CCTV looks at the transition process and what it means for the Afghan economy, Afghan society and security. Afghanistan in Transition, a special series on CCTV News. Children labor at brick kilns in Kabul and Nangarhar provinces. It's hard labor as mud is pressed into molds then laid out to dry in the baking sun. Wages here are about $5 a day, but the children rarely see any of that. They're bonded into labor to pay debts, debts that grow with interest and can never be repaid. In effect, they become slaves. An estimated 2 million children are employed in Afghanistan, but their plight is of little concern. Yes, the issue of child labor is pretty low on the agenda, both of the government and of the international community in Afghanistan because of the many other uh, challenges. It's not just children that are a concern. The ILO think that in Afghanistan's precarious labor market, 70% of jobs are potentially insecure. And while huge amounts of money from overseas donors has created the impression of growth, as the transition approaches, that could all disappear. I think a lot of the assumption has been that economic growth, GDP growth will generate jobs. Well, that's not always the case. There are many examples of countries where there's been GDP growth, but no job creation or not corresponding job creation as a result of it. Unemployment numbers are actually deceptive. Most people here can't afford to work, so they'll do anything to earn a living, if you can call it that. But even at the bottom of the unemployment scale, there's competition from outside. Five years ago, there was a huge building boom here in Kabul as foreign investment poured into the Afghan capital. But today, that's almost completely dried up with concerns over the transition process. To make it worse, what few jobs remain in construction have largely been taken by Pakistani and Iranian laborers. The day laborers are lucky if they can find even the most menial of work. Waiting all day on the off chance of a meager wage, their frustration is clear. What can we do? How long must we endure this life? It's better to be killed in a suicide attack. For the last two years, it's been dead. We're back and forth between here and home, and there's no work. I really feel ashamed at not being able to find work. And that's having security implications. Poor, angry, and idle. It's not surprising some are turning to other employment. There's plenty of Afghans who are working at $10 a day for the Taliban as a means of income, or $500 a summer uh, for the Taliban. Um, people need jobs. People need good jobs, decent jobs. For a young generation of Afghans, that's not good news. In the next two years, 50% of the population will hit working age, but it's unlikely they'll find a steady job. Tony Cheng, CCTV, Kabul.